now that we've talked about outside of the economic uh, sector, here's a question about um, more economics. Um, do you think the current turmoil in the subprime mortgage area <laughs> is going to um, drive um, the U.S. economy into dire straits? Um, and what are the implications for world trade? Okay. Well, the, uh, uh, the answer question to that question, I could give you a simple one-word answer, no. But, <laughs> but I, uh, I think you probably like a bit more. And, and, and here's, here's what I would say there. I believe we have a, a very healthy, well-balanced U.S. economy. I, I, no, I've got some water up here, so I'm all set. Uh, and we've made a transition, and we're making a transition. I think it's a successful transition from an economy that was growing at a at, at, at a level at a rate that was not sustainable to one that's that's going to be sustainable. The we, we've clearly had a big correction in, in housing in the housing market. Retail housing was growing for some time at a level that wasn't sustainable. Uh, the I think it's too early to say with certainty, but there's all the signs I look at lead me to believe that the housing market is at or near the bottom. Now, the subprime uh, is obviously an outgrowth of the housing market. And as I look at it in terms of the systemic risks, the economic risks, you know, the macro risks, I, I don't see a, it posing a serious problem. I think it's going to be largely contained. So I'm much more focused with other regulators on dealing with some of the personal distress and uh, at, at the individual level uh, because we're doing a lot of work with, uh, you know, communication with other regulators uh, because there's got to be a goal of having more people stay in their homes um, uh, managing some of the situations that relate to de delinquencies and, and, and so on. But in terms of the economic issue, it's a, it, it, it has an impact, but uh, I don't believe a major impact. Thank you. Now, here's a question um, from someone who doesn't quite understand why the Chinese want to manage their currency this way over this much time. So they wanted to ask you if you can uh, give your uh, view as to why they are targeting it uh, in this manner. Uh, listen, it's, it's very, I don't, I've learned over the years not to ascribe motives, okay? Because unless you're in another person's or another country's situation, uh, I, I don't like to, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to, to speculate about motives. Uh, what, what, I, what I do is say, they clearly see the principle. They've clearly m have moved, and they've been very clear about the need to continue to move, number one. Um, they say, and I take them at, at what they say, that they very much value stability, social and economic stability. And it clearly wouldn't be in any of our interests for China to have economic problems. I often say to people when they talk about China and they're concerned maybe China's going to do too well and outcompete the U.S., I say that to me is not the concern. That it's a big advantage for us if China does well economically. The thing that I'd be more worried about would be bumps along the road or problems. And my own concern is that, I, that China has the right goal, which is stability, economic stability and growth. My own concern is that if they don't accelerate the pace of reform, that there'll be more risk, and that this economy is now so big and so complex and partly integrated into the global economy that it's difficult to use a combination of market and administrative means, and that they should accelerate that pace. And I see the currency as being a very important part of that. It is a, it's a proxy for reform overall. But I do believe that the difference is has to do with with, a, with my judgment of stability and uh, the Chinese government. And obviously, 
this is China's a sovereign nation. They're going to make those decisions themselves, and they're going to make decisions that they believe are in the best interest of uh, of China. And so I take I take comfort in the fact that we're not arguing about principles. If there are different principles, then there would be very hard to bridge the gap. So now we're talking about the pace of reform, and uh, I'm going to be very energetic in my efforts to uh, encourage them to, to move it quicker. Thank you. Um, a, a related question is that uh, even though um, things are moving in the right direction, um, uh, how do you deal with the increasing pressure from Congress to accelerate me uh, developments and um, who are contemplating harsher trade measures? Well, that's a, uh, let me say that uh, Congress is a reflection of the U.S. public. And Lulu, I remember when I, when I was first, the president announced his intent to nominate me. And when I was, um, you know, going around and, and meeting uh, key members of Congress, I had a lot of people say to me, well, I voted for free trade measures before. I don't know whether you can count on me in the, uh, in, in the future. And the public sentiment in this country is, and, and, and I would say this, this is to me one of the big, biggest misconceptions. And as Treasury Secretary, I think one of the most important things I need to do is advocate for free trade, competition, open markets, because I don't believe economic isolationism is going to do anything other than, than hurt us. But the, I think some of the sentiment we see in Congress is a reflection of the American people who don't say trade may be good, but I'm not sure the benefits are shared either equally among the citizens of this country or equally among nations. And so that sentiment is there. And the only way I know how to, uh, to deal with it is, uh, is to make progress in our strategic economic dialogue, to, to uh, have China continue with, with reforms uh, so that the Congress can see it, to point to our growing exports to China, which are, which are very, very important, and then to be very active in, in, in my discussions uh, behind closed doors. And this is, a, this is going to consume a lot of time uh, you know, on, on my part over the next, uh, next uh, couple of years or year and a half.